Welcome back. I'm Kim Daly. She's Juliana Osborne. This is Inside Exec. Today, we're going to talk about a topic that Juliana has suggested, and it's a, called getting conflicting feedback on your leadership. So I'll let her introduce it for once. This is about some of my clients coming in saying, look, we do these surveys and the 360 or whatever it is, they've got the really good attitude towards the surveys and want to do the right thing. And they bit confused when they get conflicting information. And sometimes it's quite the opposite to what their feedback is. So one person might say, you unavailable at all. I can never get to see you. And someone is you're always there, it's in my face, sort of thing. And we talked a bit about that. And then initially, and when I was in those situation, I think I might have reacted the same as everyone and that is being confused and saying, well, somebody's telling me I'm, you know, A and I should be B and somebody's saying I'm B and I should be A. Now, over time, I came to realise and and really learning from other people's leadership rather than my own, I learned that, that's actually not surprising. First of all, any feedback, should, we should not be defensive to it. Any feedback, whether we agree with it or not, should be taken in a, in, in a sense that how will it help me grow? That is the most important step. Secondly, to say, well, if you are a good leader, you don't approach each person exactly the same, do you? Each person is different and they have a different style and the way you talk to them is different to the other person. There's also a relationship. Somebody you worked with for many years, you have an understanding and relationship where you might have a shortcut in there in the way you talk, unlike someone who's you've just been working or they've been in your team for a few months or something like that. So again, don't be surprised by the conflict, but try to understand why did they perceive you that way? And it's their perception and why they perceived you that way. Sometimes it's to do with maybe your delivery. Sometimes it's to do with what you intended to come across and how you came across. And sometimes, and most of the time, I have to say, it's down to communication, the way that you maybe did not take the, the to, to give the background or where you're coming from on this point or that point, or whatever it is. So each time you get feedback, whether it's good, bad, or conflicting, it's a good thing to have. Always thank people for doing that, because the more they tell you, the more you can address it. It's when they don't tell you, and you don't get feedback, is that when you don't know what's happening. Now, there is a very important thing here, and it says to me, be authentic. Do not try to just please everyone. So they told me to do this, so I'll go and do it. And then you're going to upset someone else. So again, use your judgment and your common sense. For example, as one leader said to me, they told me that I, um, I got feedback that said, I'm very task driven. And no matter how hard things are, I'm always come across, I'm in control, I'm decisive. I can still keep going forward with me and my team and, you know, very, very strong leadership sort of thing. And some people thought that was fantastic. And other people said that made me so feeling inadequate. It made me feel less appreciated because that person seems like a machine. They, my leader is a machine and they seem to be able to deal with anything. And I feel really, really bad because I feel like I'm not good enough. So the leader said, I took this on board and realized that, and maybe, yes, I do that. So I modified it, and I tried to use some of the things that I read can help me, things that to use language that makes me sound more human and to, to be more empathetic and all of that. So I'll be saying, oh, this is a really rough road, Jeez, I had a rough day, or oh, this is going to be a climb uphill, or whatever it is. And then I got criticised in the next <laughs> feedback session by being, God, we don't need a leader who feels like they're overwhelmed. We don't want a leader who says, I'm drowning. I want a mm-hmm. leader who can take us through this. Again, don't blindly try to address 
a single or even even if you had surveyed 20 people and 50% said one thing and 50% said the other. Remember, individuals, situations, actual timing, all of those things. But more important is demonstrating through action and communication. So if they see you as the machine gun that's always there, seven o'clock in the morning till whatever hour at night and, you know, even coming in on weekends, you have the right to do that because that's what you feel comfortable in that works for you. But also let them see when you're taking time off, when you're actually going to, to have time off, to let them know that what suits work for them and what works for you are two different things, but you're accommodating, you're flexible and you're human. And hmm. talk to them a lot more about that than less in that sense. So don't worry too much about the conflicting but don't also go and punish yourself and try to be a model leader that it's not you. It's You've got to be authentic and continuous and may improve. It, and in those examples, I was able to see that, mm, you know what, it was really easy. People say it's hard to change your behavior, but in those examples, it was easy to change your behavior. But guess what? Not the perception. That was harder to change someone's perception. All of a sudden, see you as wishy-washy. <laughs> so I guess it's not an easy one, but all feedback is welcome. Act on it. Be seen to be acting on it. Clarify if possible and try to address it. It would be absolutely wrong for me to say you should be able to take it and whatever and be dealing with it and all of that. The point is take it, but go process it yourself. Go process it with someone who you know or trust, like a mentor. Do that in a sense where you can come to terms of what it is they're trying to say, what's your reaction, and you might 100% disagree. But how are you going to process that yourself? what you're going to do about it, and how you're going to do it. So don't react immediately. Don't, that's, that would not because we're human and we're emotional. So process it in safe environment and then have an action plan on how you're going to demonstrate that. I'd like to take it a step earlier than that and say if you're doing these kind of surveys, you have to expect that you are going to get conflicting results. So in expecting it, you've already taken the first step to processing it. You need to really expect that you're going to have the the spectrum of responses because you're dealing with a whole range of people who are different, different people, different reactions, different situations. My first question would be, is anyone leaving your team or your organisation because of the way you lead or you manage? And if they're not, then remember that when you're reacting to what they've said. Because if it's not enough to make them leave, it might just be the last thing that they can remember that aggravated them. They might feel like when they're filling out these surveys, they have to put down something negative because nobody puts down that everything's wonderful. So you've got to put down something that's that's not right. And I go back to the surveys that I do of places where I stay. I won't write anything negative in a public survey. But if I feel there's something that the establishment should address, I will write to them directly and say, these are the things that weren't quite up to the standard that I expected, but I never put it on a public forum because that's not fair to them. I haven't given them the opportunity to first address the shortcomings that I see. And so it's the same with these things. Someone's giving you the opportunity to have a look at what they perceive as not up to the standard that they would have expected And so you have the opportunity to address that particular thing for that particular person. It's not an all-encompassing one. Unless everyone has said the same thing and they're not if they're conflicting ones, then you don't need to make an umbrella change. But you do need to look at that situation, that person, that communication, and I think the bottom line is always communication. And it's communication in terms of understanding. So you might think that you're communicating really well, but what you're saying is not what that person is hearing. 
So you need to have that feedback from them to, to that reinforces the message that you wanted to get across is what they're hearing. It might be that, that they say, well, when do you want this report? And you'll say, well, any time in the next seven days would be good. You're thinking any of those days in the next seven days would be good, and they're thinking the seventh day is when it's due, any time in the next seven days. So I've got seven days to do it. It's due at the end of that period of time because that's what they're, you know, that's how they process that bit of information. It's about understanding, both of you understanding the same thing regardless of what the communication is. So so be aware of that when you're looking at the what feedback they're getting and obviously if, if there's conflicting if someone's saying they don't communicate well or you know, they, they put unrealistic expectations on me it might just be that communication if someone else is saying no the, the deadlines are always good then they have the same understanding as you about what you're saying so it still comes back to understanding the communication both of you understanding the same part of the communication don't make comparisons. So don't say, well, last year they said this and this year they're saying that. You know, that, that time is gone. You've got to live in, I'm going to go back to situationally aware. Be aware of where you are and where the team is and what's happening around you at this time. So I don't see it as a very good idea at all to compare what people said last year to what they're saying this year because Everything could have changed. You just think back. If you did your 360s at the end of 2019 and then you did them at the end of 2020, Mm. there's going to be very different reactions and you can't compare them because we were not in any way in the same situation in those two years in a work Mm. environment. So there's no point in, in comparing the results out of those surveys. And it's about don't compare one person to another as well. So this person said this and this person said that. It doesn't matter in terms of relative values. What you need to be looking at is this person said X, I need to think about X. This person said Y, I need to think about Y. And just because they say good stuff doesn't mean you don't have to think about that as well. Yeah. Because it might be that in 12 months' time they'll say the opposite. So what has changed in that time and is it valid for you to be focused on that so much or do you look, take a broader approach and say, well, the, the whole result was this. There's a couple of things that are niggling issues. I'll deal with them first. You know, it's, it's the, the classic do the stuff you don't like first because you'll feel really good when you've done it and then go on to the other things that pat you on the back. For years and years and years, we used to do surveys at the end of training courses. You know, how was the training course? And I railed against it because I thought, what can we ask them? They're, they're, they're at the end. It's like going to a birthday party. Did you enjoy the birthday party? Well, yes, I got lollies to go home with, you know. Of course I enjoyed it. Not the fact that I didn't get the cake, that someone pulled my hair, I didn't win the prize in one of the games, you know, because I got lollies on the way home. Mm. So they always remember the last thing, last good thing or the last bad thing that happened. And so sometimes those reactions can be the last interaction you had, not 12 months at all. And so bear that in mind as well. I've covered all of my points. I'm just looking down at my notes to make sure I've covered all the points. So expect that you will get conflicting results. Don't make comparisons one year to the next with individual people. Is anyone leaving because of the bad or the conflicting results that you seem to be getting? If you were getting such conflicting results all the time, it would indicate that your leadership is really under question and people would be leaving. So if they're not leaving, then... 90% of what you're doing is right and there's just a little bit that you need to look at. Always acknowledge that people have given you feedback of one kind or another, doesn't matter whether it's good or bad. Just acknowledge that they have taken the time to think about that and and have given you some feedback and then really look at that disparity between your communication and their understanding or your understanding and their communication, if that's what it is. That, I think, is the key. And don't forget to get external help and advice if you need it, as in talking it over with someone you trust and independent who will be objective. And also I want to refer you to another episode that we had on about sabotage. And remember, if there is an element of that in in any of that, 
uh, to keep that in mind, but go and listen to that podcast because it specifically talks about that. Not to get paranoid and not to think everyone is sabotaging, but look after yourself and look after how you feeling, process it, cover all angles, and then come out with uh, whatever you think is the right action for, for this survey or this feedback. That's the Brandon Wilson episodes. There's three of them, so I'll put the links at the bottom of this podcast. And bear in mind, one of the things that he did say to us at that time was that sometimes it's unconscious what these people are doing, that they don't realise that the action and the reaction that, that is happening around their activities. So they're good podcasts to listen to and to be reminded of. It's a topic that we don't talk about at work, and it was very much an eye-opener when we first released those podcasts. That's our take on getting conflicting feedback about your leadership. For now, I'm Kim Bailey. She's Fuliana Osborne. This is Inside Exec.